Kelly, um, obviously yesterday you uh, led the team in assists. What's it been like being sort of the playmaker of the team with uh, Quick and Barnes? In? Yeah, I mean, someone's got to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm just trying to help the young guys, you know, you know make it a little bit easier on them. Uh, you know, get them some easy looks, some easy baskets. Um, you know, keep the continuity and flow of the offense a little bit. Because, uh, you know, when you don't have you know, guys who make a bunch of plays for others, it gets a little, a little stagnant, and it's, it's tough to play like that. You mentioned the young guys. Obviously, you're one of the more experienced players that's active on this team right now. For sure. What's that been like for you as uh, sort of the veteran presence? Yeah, I mean, you know, just bring that experience, that knowledge. Uh, like I said, just help, help these guys any way you can on and off the court. Good cutter. I mean, a lot of it's timing. Um, you know, timing, and uh, you know, after that, you gotta be able to finish when you cut. But um, you know, a lot of it's just timing and, and knowing, you know, seeing the opportunities and, and taking advantage of them, um, and, and always being ready to cut. You know, a lot of cutters like they just never stop moving. Um, you know, once the guy turns his head, he's gone. Uh, you know, just stay in constant movement. You know, but. A lot. Of, I'd, I'd say the biggest thing is just timing, because we could both make the same cut, but if I go too early or too late, it's not. It's not the same. I mean, are you trying to guide contact with the guy, or are you trying to? A little bit, but you know, in today's game, it's like, you know, the, you got the whole court, the whole field. You know, guys are all moving at once. You kind of got to see the whole play. So it's not. It used to be like kind of eye contact, you cut, but now it's, it's kind of like. You know, if, if you move, then uh, then I'll find you, kind of thing. And are some guys better at sure. Definitely. I mean, some guys that like, grew up, that's how they played pass, cut, or they scored off cutters. Other guys have been shooters, spot up guys all their life. They, they're not really in tune to cut all the time. You're going to take a guy like Brady, who you know, has a bit of both. Have you seen that chemistry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can do a little bit of both. And, you know, one thing is, like, you know, if you. If, you, if you're a willing passer, guys are more willing cutters. So that, that kind of goes hand in hand. So once they know that you'll make the pass and you're looking for them, you'll throw it, you know, guys are willing to cut because nobody wants to run around for 48 minutes cutting all over the place and never touch the ball. So. Has your, has your game expanded in the last 10 games? Has my game expanded? Yeah. Or improved or I mean, I think you're always trying to improve, but I, I mean, I think I think my role expanded. Man, man, I think my game kind of stayed the same. I don't know how much you expand your game in two weeks, but yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah, I think my role expanded definitely. That brings different skill sets to the play more. Yeah, different skill sets. I mean, like you see, I mean, they they were playing through me a lot more. I mean, we didn't, when we don't quick or RJ. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm primary playmaker. You know, we got a bunch of shooters and cutters and uh, different guys on the floor, but. Um, we were kind of playing through me at the top a lot more. What's, uh, what's it been like getting back and getting into the rhythm? You must be pretty eager to play. Yeah, man. Um, can never take basketball for granted. Um, anytime you get a chance to even come to the gym and just work on your game and um, be around the game that you love, it's, it's, you don't take that opportunity for granted. So um, just good to be back in the gym, good to be back in uh, Toronto. Um, so I'm excited. How supportive uh, has the organization been? During this time, your teammates and what's it been like being back around the guys? Oh, uh, it's helped out a lot. Um, this organization has been nothing but great since I've been here. Um, the support, the love um, that they show me over the past 10 to two weeks, 10 days to two weeks, has been you know unbelievable, and uh, I'm really grateful for them. Yeah. Um. Uh, he was like uh, my dad very much in my life, but he was just a, like another father figure to me. Uh, been there every step of the way. Um, college visits, first basketball I ever picked up. He was he was right there with me, um, and he's been with me every step, everywhere, everywhere the journey. So uh, he was somebody that was really close to me. Yeah, through all that, um, God has been nothing short of magnificent, you know, this whole year. Uh, he's been with me every step of the way. I appreciate him. Um, and just the love that people have shown, uh, the love I'm going to continue to show even through my loss, I hope can be an example uh, to people that there's hope still uh, as long as you have Jesus. So, um, you know, that's what I try to live by. I'm curious, how have people shown that love? Like, what sort of expressions? Not just, I guess, speaking to you, but what have they done? 
Um, there was like 10 to 12 people that came to my uncle's funeral from the Toronto organization, uh, and they didn't have to do that. Uh, like you said, love is an action word, so it's not just something you just say, but something that you do, and uh, they've definitely shown that. I think just the mindset of, you know, the consistent mindset of, uh, you know, just having the the mindset to just come out and be myself every single night. I've tried to do that, but just continuing to um, build on that uh, every night, coming with the approach that I'm going to make something happen in the game, that I'm going to do something great, uh, and just continuing that every time that I step on the floor. Seems like tomorrow could be, could be your first game at and RJ's first game back. Uh, I mean, what is it? You guys have been along for the ride with each other all year. What does it mean to eventually, whether it's tomorrow or another night, step back on the floor with him? Uh, it's great. Uh, not only just RJ. RJ is obviously my guy, but uh, the whole team. Um, like I said, this organization has been uh, great since the first day I got here. Um, and just to be able to um, you know, share the court with those guys has been a blessing. And uh, look forward to that. Same expectations that I have every single time that I step on the floor is to give God glory through my gift of playing basketball and uh, to never take any day or game for granted um, and to give it everything I have and to, to, to be the best I can be. This is obviously an important summer off season coming up for you as it is for, for a lot of these guys. How important is it to go into the summer with some momentum with, with reps over these next few weeks like for, for people that maybe don't understand what's at stake over the next few weeks. Is that like an important thing to be able to kind of get that momentum going into the offseason? Yeah, I think momentum is important, but I feel like throughout the time that I've been here, like I say all the time, I've I've taken each day with the approach that I'm going to get better each and every day. So when you get to this time of the season, you're not really changing anything that you do, but uh, just continuing what you believe in and, and, and the work that you put in. What's the focus of uh, practice today, just sort of sitting between two games? Uh, we watched a very l lengthy uh, film session today, uh, just cleaning up things on, on offense and defense. Um, I praised guys uh, for doing an amazing job defensively as a part of April Fool's Day. Uh, <laughs> uh, 135 points was definitely not something that, that we are aspiring to. Uh, but uh, all jokes aside, uh, uh, we really focused on uh, talking about uh, what we need to do better defensively. Majority of that uh, being transition defense, uh, not allowing easy points, uh, just having responsibilities, what we need to do there. And then uh, practice, we just walk through a couple of things offensively and defensively just to, to be better organized. We have a lot of players playing outside of their roles. You know, we have uh, Garrett Temple playing, playing a backup five and just getting him more comfortable knowing the plays and how to run and what we need to run is, is uh, something that we focused on today. How, how does a team already missing size deal with Anthony Davis? Ooh. Um, <laughs> uh, obviously, Anthony Davis is one of the best bigs in the league and uh, somebody who is creating a lot of problems to, to teams around the league. You know, uh, always when you talk of uh, this caliber of player, it, it, it can never be one player's job to, to, to stop them, you know. And uh, main, uh, main focus is going to be physicality, doing our job early. Um, not allowing easy catches and also trying to keep them, uh, keep him off the glass and, uh, you know, slow down his role game as well. You asked him so much of Kelly now in sort of an expanded role. And now you're talking to Garrett as your backup center. Kind of a nightmare situation going in against a guy like that. I mean, it is what it is. We got to accept the reality. Uh, we got to understand the big picture and we got to take advantage of the, of the moment that we have and uh, if, if this moment now if you can create uh, some additional chemistry between Kelly and, uh, and Grady uh, I think that's going to be a huge win for, for us and also uh, 
trying to uh, improve our defense with Kelly at position five, just like learning uh, coverages and, uh, you know, our support uh, spots on the court is going to be huge for us. And Garrett is a guy, of course, who's played point guard at points in his career. What, what is it about his skill set or his experience that kind of lends itself to being able to step into a position like this? I mean, uh, he's a point five right now, uh, and uh, he's, uh, he's just a very smart player. And he knows the league. Uh, we, we really simplified our offensive playbook as well, so it, it, it is easier for guys to know what they're, what they're doing and where to be on the court. Being organized is, uh, is the biggest part of what we need and can do right now, and uh, he's really good with that, recognizing those situations and putting us in those situations. Any chance of Mokai or RJ uh, RJ probable uh, as well as quickly and uh, Ochai still out. We're, we're going to be speaking to quickly in a few minutes here. Uh, what does his possible return to your lineup mean for the team? Um, means a lot, obviously. Uh, for, for me, more than anything, it's about uh, team growth and his growth uh, to finish the season on a good note here. Uh, he had very uh, rough stretch over here for last two weeks uh, he lost somebody very close to him and uh, uh, just getting him back on the court playing basketball uh, getting his mentality right is, is, is a big uh, plus for him and for us uh, he's going he's going according to the plan he's starting to a little bit more but uh, it's gonna take some time for him to get back thanks for watching the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel check out our latest videos and subscribe for more Trent answers back. Gary, Gary sidestep. Three.